So today is the day I finally show you the racks I've built. Um, I've been putting off for a little while just because I wanted to do some extra bits to the racks. I wanted to clean them up a little bit and tidy a few things up. I wanted to get more of the cable management and that sort and things like that. Um, but I just haven't had time. I've been on holiday. I've literally just come back from holiday. So I want to get the initial video of this out now. I'll show you everything, how it works, how I made it, things like that. Um, and then further down the line, I can just show you all the improvements I've made, basically. So I don't really know where to start. I'll probably show you the overall racks. I think I've, I've shown you in my previous video. I'll show you the racks, the movement of the tubs, things like that, the heating. Um, and then I'll probably go into a little bit more detail of how I've actually put it all together. So yeah, I'm no engineer. I don't know how to weld. I don't know how to do a lot of the stuff that went into building this. A lot of it I just learned through YouTube videos. I'm not gonna do this as like a tutorial or how-to video just because I don't wanna show you how to do something that I don't really know how to do, if that makes sense. Um, from a distance, yeah, it looks quite nice. It looks quite clean, things like that. But when you get up close, you can see flaws. Like you can see where the welds aren't 100%, um, where I haven't cleaned it up, just where I've rushed it a little bit. And to us, I'm not too bothered about that. The whole idea of this was it, it's just to serve a purpose. Um, if I wanted to get it perfect, I'd probably spend twice as much time building it. And I just didn't want to do that, basically. I just wanted to get this up and running as quick as possible, just because I needed the snakes to be transferred over. And there are things I can do to touch all this up. Um, but to be honest, I'm not that bothered. At the end of the day, it serves a purpose, which is the main thing. Um, the, the only thing I'm really going to do to this to make it a little bit better is I'm going to buy like a, an abrasive buffing wheel. Um, and I'm basically just going to go over the whole of the front of this, just to clean all up, take all the surface scratches off, um, clean up these welds a little bit, things like that. Um, other than that, I'm not really going to do a lot else to it. I was thinking about painting it. Um, but yeah, I just can't bother at the end of the day. It serves a purpose, it does a job. The snakes are happy and safe, so that's all that matters. So this is how they look overall. So you can see I've got three uh, racks here. They're 10 high, um, they go all the way to the floor, which is what I wanted. I want to try and make uh, use of as much of the space as possible. Um, up at the top there, you can see there's enough room just for like one tub to sit on top. And that's just going to be storage up there. I'm probably going to put all my um, uh, coconut husks that I've mixed up. All that stuff's probably going to be in spare trays that I've got and they're just going to sit up the top there for when I need them. Um, but yeah, so they're, they're 10 higher, so at the minute I've got a block of 30. Uh, there is going to be one more rack that will eventually be here. As you can see, the heat strips come all the way across to accommodate that fourth rack. Um, yeah, ignore all this mess. This this has changed now. I was going to put a huge six foot fish tank up here above the pond I've got, um, but I'm scrapping the idea. I'm just going to fill this with another rack. So I've got the, the rack down here that I've been going on about for ages. This is all gonna be changed now. I'm gonna make my own custom racks uh, using the LP5 tubs. And then this is gonna be another full rack of, I think it's LP, I can't remember what the tubs are, but the big racks. It's sort of an in-between of the FB70 and the LP5. So that's sort of my mid grow ons. But yeah, this is all gonna be a, a rack now above the pond. I'll get more into that into another video. That'll probably be more for a, a pond video. As you can see the pond sort of getting a bit more completed. Um, you can see in here I've got a load of uh, ceramic media that I'm cycling just because I'm waiting for, you can see the little hole there, I'm sorting out the filter today so hopefully I can get this pond up and running fully. The air pump is turned off at the minute so that's why there's no bubbles but you can see I've got uh, one of those little, it's like a guy, it's like a half beak, I'm not sure what it is. And then down here, I don't know if it's going to be able to focus on you can see I've got my uh, Dorado, Golden Dorado. Um, he's in here now swimming around happy and I have got a bicep which is you can just see his tail there sticking up. But yeah, all this media has been there for a few weeks cycling. Um, so that's all going to get moved outside to where the filtration is. But yeah, I'll, I'll do all this in another video. So these are the racks I've built. This first, this one done is the first one that I've built. Um, this is like the test run just to see whether I could do it or not, whether it would be feasible. Um, and then these two came afterwards. So I built this one last year. Um, and then I built these two a few months ago, or longer, probably like the beginning of the year now. Um, and yeah, they, they're doing absolutely perfectly. For someone that doesn't have a workshop, all this was done by hand tool. So I was using a hand saw, um, for hand files, I was using blowtorch and things like that, sandpaper, um, drills, a handheld rivet gun. So yeah, so all of this was built by hand. There was no special tools needed. So if you wanted to attempt something like this, you can. Um, just be aware of the, the money side of it. This stuff, aluminium, it's not exactly cheap. Um, I will tell you costs. I will do a full cost breakdown of everything uh, that it costs, but I can tell you I built each of these for, I wanna say, 
Overballing, I want to say under 700 pounds. So say 700 max, um, each of these cost. I think if you used to buy these professionally made, I think they're probably upwards two grand. So I've probably built all football. I would, I've got all the materials for the fourth one, I just need to do it. Um, but all the tubs, the racks, and all the heating stuff, I've built under for under two and a half grand. So four racks for under two, I think that's pretty decent to be honest. Um, I could have gone out and bought them, but I like to do stuff myself and yeah, I think they've turned out all right. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll show you the, uh, I have to pour one of the tubs out just so I can show you actually. Um, basically you can see the tubs there, I'll, I'll try and be quiet so you can hear. A lot of these tubs in Georgia here, they're like scraping and noisy, but as you can see, it's, it's dead smooth. Um, there's no stick, uh, there is one that sticks. Uh, I can't remember which one, it's one of my albino female in. Um, no, it's not that one, I can't remember what one it is now. Um, but yeah, one of them does stick and that's just where, I'll show you later with these, but these rivets in here, um, one of, like this one isn't completely flush, this one isn't an issue, but some of them aren't completely flush, just because my rivet gun just could not get into this 100%. Um, so yeah, one of the rivets sticks out a bit and it sticks and I've just got to sand it down. But um, yeah, all the drawers, they slide in that perfectly. These two are perfect. Uh, this one I made slightly wider. Um, and the issue, I've got to be careful, one of these will bite me. Uh, yeah, she will bite me. Um, so with this, as you pull the drawer out, if you pull it to one side, you can see the drawer sort of slides down there. And that's basically just where it fits here. Um, but obviously with these tubs they sort of taper inwards in the middle they like bow inwards um, and I didn't really account for that when I made it so um, yeah so these ones they do drop down every now and again if you don't keep the tubs bang in the middle but that's not an issue I can always uh, 3d print some little spacers just to put in there just to sort of keep it in place but to be honest I'm not really that fussed about it. It's not something I'm going to be selling. Um, I know how they work. I know how to pull the drawers out basically without them falling. So yeah, it's not a massive issue. So they do slide in and out quite nicely. They're very, um, very smooth. Obviously these two slide out a lot better than this one. Um, the one of the things that I had to work on was with these little runners that I built, that I put in place, to stop them from sort of scraping the bottom of these tubs. All I had to do really was just round this edge off. Um, but yeah, that's what makes it move in and out nice and smoothly. Uh, the other thing that I wanted, this is, because this is going to be in place, I don't want to be pulling these racks apart. They are on um, wheels as such. So down here, I don't know, again, I don't know if you're going to be able to see because it's too dark, maybe on this side. You can see just in the corner there, this little round bit, it's like a, a rollerball roller. So it's basically like a big ball bearing inside a housing. So these racks do move. Um, but they don't move very well when they're loaded up with all the snakes and the tubs. Um, the wheels just aren't rated to move with that amount of weight. So I can move these, it is a bit of a, it does scrape along the floor a little bit when you move them, but to honest, they're not there to be moved, they're there to be solid. Um, I was thinking about actually joining all four of these together so they're one solid unit, just riving it across the top. Uh, but I decided against that in the end just because if I do want to move them for whatever reason it's just hassle drilling the rivets out and things like that so I just decided to leave them as four separate units at the minute I'm just holding them together with some zip ties but once my 3D printer's here I'm going to be putting some brackets up the top which will actually clamp them together and hold them together a bit better so once that's here uh, that will be another project to do the other thing I wanted about these is I want them to be as accessible as possible so the drawers come out um, and then if I go onto the side view, you can see I'm using like this polycarbonate on top. So that's actually the top, that's like the lid, if you like. So where, oh, I don't know who's in here, I don't know if they're gonna bite me. But as, oh, there's a pair in there. But as you can see, as that opens up, you've got that polycarbonate sheet that sits on the top of the runners. So that's what keeps the snakes in there. And as you can see at the minute, I've just got tape holding them in. Again, my 3D printer, I need to 3D print some brackets that are gonna sit over there to hold that in place. And the other ones are gonna go down here which actually hold the heat strip up closer to the tub. That way I can turn the thermostat down a bit because even though these are heating this up to 90 degrees perfectly, um, obviously the thermostat's up a little bit higher just because of that heat, that gap, the heat can like disperse a little bit easier. So I need to 3D print a bracket just to raise that up so it's almost touching the bottom of that tub. And um, yeah, that should hopefully lower the cost of the uh, the heating. But yeah, so this is polycarbonate. 
Um, I was going to use metal for this, and I was going to drill my own holes in metal and things like that. Um, but it just it worked out way way too expensive. Um, and the good thing about polycarbonate is that this is actually more insulating than metal. Um, this will actually keep the heat in the tub a lot better. Um, there's no chance. Oh, I can't focus you. There's no chance of it rusting or anything like that. Um, it's cheap to replace if it gets broken. Um, and yeah, it's easy to clean. And the good thing about this polycarbonate is that I can actually slide it out. So once these are obviously stuck in place, stop it moving. But once I have the little brackets, this whole sheet will actually slide out the front. So if I want to give like the the rack and the tub a full clean down, I can take the tub out. I can slide the polycarbonate out, clean everything, put it all back, and I know everything is disinfected and it's absolutely perfect. Um, I think there are some racks out there that do that with the removable bit there, but. Um, I can't remember what the Mac is now, but yeah, I wanted that feature just because when cleaning, I want to make sure everything is absolutely perfect. Um, so yeah, that's basically how the drawer part works. So I've got the runner and I've got the bit that sits just on the top. This bit is trapped in place by this bar. Um, so that's basically the function of the drawer. That's, that's the, the main part. That was the hardest part to do, basically, trying to get all these lined up. As you can see, They're, all these lines are pretty much straight. Bear in mind, I made all these completely separately. Cutting them by hand, measuring them, things like that. You can see each of the rows are pretty, pretty dead on. They're not perfect, but again, unless you looked closely, unless you got a spirit level and lined it up, you wouldn't be able to tell. Um, so actually making the rack, actually getting these bits uh, to join, things like that. So some of these uh, welds have gone really well. Some of them are a bit messy. That's just where it's, it's a bit hit and miss, basically. And it all depends on like the weather conditions and things like that. But if we have a look at this weld here, um, you can see that dark line. This is where I've welded it together. Um, now it's not welding as such, it's more brazing. So, so the whole idea of brazing is you put these two bits of metal together. Um, I've chamfered the edges of here just so that it gives the material something to stick to. Um, and I've also sanded the edge of this down as well, roughing it up just so it makes more surface area. And all I did was I butted these two together, clamped them in place. I've got a handheld blowtorch I heated up this metal as hot as I could get it without melting it and then all I'd do is I'd get the brazing rod and I'd just lay a bead of uh, aluminium rod into that and let it settle and I'd do that for all four sides um, and that's pretty much it that's all I did now it's not as, it's not as strong as welding it's pretty strong to be honest um, as you can see there's a lot of weight in these racks you think these are all adult females in here um, all these females range from sort of two kilos up to four and a half kilos. So there's a lot of weight. So if we average it out, say there's uh, two kilos per snake. So there's 10 tubs there. So that's 20 kilos of weight just in one rack. The tubs themselves there, <laughs> these FB7 tubs are actually quite heavy. Um, I want to say they're a good sort of three, four kilos each. Um, just because the, the plastic on them is so thick. So again, that's another 30 kilos. So that's 50 kilos of weight. That's without the water bowls, the bedding and all the other little bits that go with it. So there's a fair amount of weight that's actually sat on this rack. Now these parts aren't actually massive to the structure of the, the rack. The main, the, these basically held the frame together. So they are doing something, um, but they basically held the, the rack together while I did everything else. These bits here with the rivets and the runners, as you can see the runners go all the way from front to back. This is actually the structural side of it. This is what's sort of stopping the rack from falling apart as such. Um, the rack can, it could split if you wanted to. It could probably split apart this way so these could pop off and move away. But when it's, with all these welds going down, I think that's gonna be enough strength. But the majority of the weight is pushing downwards. So all I needed was something to hold it together mainly. And that's, that's what these runners were for. Um, and as I said before, these runners, they are literally just welded and uh, riveted in place. So drilled a hole all the way through, rivet gun, and yeah, that's it pretty much. So that's how I basically made the racks. There's, there's nothing magical about it. There's no secret to doing it. Um, I probably watched about 100 YouTube videos on how to braze. It is quite difficult because um, you need to make sure you get this metal up to temperature um, rather than just melting the rod. If you had this weld here, and you was heating it up with a blowtorch and then you didn't heat this up hot enough and if you just put the rod in place the rod will melt before this gets up to temperature so the whole idea of it is you heat this metal up keep heating it keep heating it and with the rod just dab the rod on it every now and again and when the rod melts on contact with this that's when you know this metal is hot enough that it will melt the rod without the flames so then you can just bead it in and then you get that 
nice weld there and a lot of this i've had to ground grind down so i did actually get a sanding disc on a drill um, and then i just sort of basically sanded all these down you can see there's bits that i've missed there's like a little lumpy bit here again i'm not too worried about that i think once i buff it up a lot of that you won't see anyway um, but yeah it is dead simple it is very time consuming um, i probably spent a good i think the first rack it, it took me a solid week to make from start to finish that's all the welding, the riveting, cleaning it up, getting all the plastic in and things like that. It was probably a solid week. Uh, these two probably took me three to four days each. Um, but that's me not being at work, um, basically spending a full day from morning till night, three to four solid days. So it does take a lot of time. Um, but I think if you're saving yourself, we you think about, it, I don't know how much, say, say these go for like two and a half grand each. Uh, I've probably saved myself, what, seven and a half grand? Easy, because I've built all four for the price of one. So it, it swings and roundabouts. You, you could go and get a top end product, which is absolutely perfect, or you could do it yourself. And these do exactly the same thing. I'm not knocking any companies out there. They're, a lot of the rack companies out there are absolutely superb, but for me, I, I just like making stuff myself. As you can see, my entire room is just completely DIY'd myself. So I've got my own little DIY table. As you can see, I've made my own pond. All these tubs were just basic tubs and I've changed them so they've actually got, I'll show you this one, I've actually 3D printed little dividers and little dividing thing, there's a little turd in there. So you can see two little female clowns in there, they look absolutely banging. This was a random clutch, I don't know if you've seen this video, you might want to go back and watch it, but this is my, um, there's a, a retained sperm dual side clutch, so the female had two lots of uh, dads basically, one was retained sperm from the year before and uh, one was from the parent the year I paired them. And I think my uh, banana clown, I've actually got him up for sale, banana head clown, I think he's a blade as well. So as you can see, one of the babies, two of the babies came out like this, and then one came out like this, and then the other was all other random blackhead stuff. So, but yeah, getting off it, I've customized all these tubs myself. I just bought these from B&Q. Um, and yeah, same with my incubator. I'm just using like a, a Viv at the minute for my incubator while I'm currently trying to finish this one and I can't finish this incubator until I get my 3D printer so it's, it's just one of them things it's just once the 3D printer's here I can basically get everything in this room done I'm literally just waiting for that um, but yeah that's basically how I've made the racks that's how the racks function now heating wise a lot of people message me about the heat because I'm not using heat mats I'm using heat cable so as you can see this is the heat cable it's really messy at the minute just because I, I need to tidy all this up um, but I wanted to use heat cable rather than heat mats because if I was to use heat mats for this I could probably get one heat mat to stretch across three um, but they're quite expensive so I probably would have done one heat mat for two tubs and you think that's 10 rows so that's going to be 10 heat mats for this row that's 10 plugs and then when these two are set up that would be another 10 so that's going to be 20 plugs um, that I'd need to run this rack and I'm massively, massively paranoid about fires. I've, I've seen loads of people have fires over in America and in the UK. Um, and yeah, I'm just paranoid about fires. So I want to try and limit the amount of risk there is. So that's why I've gone for the, the heat cable. Um, so I've got two heat cables running this. So it's literally just two plugs that's going to be running all four racks. Um, I think the heat cable were 48 meter heat cables. Now if I take you over here and actually show you how I've done it. So this uh, plastic that I've got them in, this is just trunking um, or conduit, I think it's called for people a bit more technical, uh, but it's basically for cable management. So people run all their electrical cables and stuff. So I think you've seen them on walls where you have a plug socket on the wall and the cable runs up inside the little box. That's basically all this is. Um, so what I've done, if I show you on this one, I've put some insulation tape on the inside of it. And then I've basically just run the cables up and down a couple of times. I think I've done it five times. Uh, four times so you can see it goes up and down four times and that's literally the perfect amount of heat to actually get these tubs to to 90 degrees um, i will get my thermometer in a minute just so i can give you a little test so you can actually see um, but yeah i've literally just got one strip on each rack and if you follow it all the way along you can see it goes all the way to the very end to the very last uh, rack and yeah that's that's all i'm running for heat um, like i said once my printer gets here i can bolt uh, put these up so they're closer to the tubs that way I know I'm getting maximum heat one thing I'm thinking of doing is putting that uh, insulation electrical tape over the top of this so it makes like um, a heat panel if you look at a lot of the heat racks now 
Uh, they have like an aluminium panel that sits on top of the heat so it disperses it a bit better. Um, I'm thinking of doing that because that way this isn't open to the air. Um, it'll all be trapped in then hopefully aluminium tape will heat up evenly and then heat up the tub. But to me, this is working fine. I'm just trying to think of making it a little bit more economical electric wise because we all know prices of electric is just absolutely redonkulous at the minute. But yeah, so that's basically what I've done. You can see it just sort of goes up, zigzags up and down, goes to the next one, zigzags up and down, goes to the next one. All of this as well, I'm gonna be using uh, that electrical foil tape for. Um, so I'm gonna get all this managed nicely. So what I'll probably do is I'll probably keep these together and then I'll just tape them in place so it's all tucked up nicely and hidden out of the way. Um, but again, that's something else that I'm gonna do further down the line. For the thermostat, uh, the thermostat is actually there. So I've got a little plastic uh, piece of the conduit cap, but this is what actually caps it off. I've actually got that throughout the whole thing. Uh, if I show you over here somewhere, where is it? So if I show you in here, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see because it's very dark. So you can see there where there's the gap between the two tubs. I've actually put that little cap on the top. Again, it was just to try and trap the heat in a little bit. So where in between these two tubs, obviously I don't need heat in between here. So I just put the cap on top basically to try and keep the heat in. It's only revealed underneath the tubs. Um, whether it makes difference or not, I don't know. But then if I'm gonna cover them with electrical tape, I'll probably just do that throughout the whole thing anyway. Um, but yeah. I'll show you this little cap down here where the uh, thermostat is. So I've put the plastic cap on top and then I've taped the thermostat to the actual cap. Now I've not put the tape over the therm top of the thermostat tip. I found that by doing that it actually traps a little bit more heat in um, and it just makes the heat cable run a little bit hotter because uh, a little bit cooler because it because it traps that heat underneath the tape. Um, it basically tricks it into thinking it's warmer than it is. And this is all about actually getting the surface temperature. So I've put that plastic cap there just to simulate the bottom of the tubs, basically. So that probe on top of that uh, plastic should be 90 degrees. Um, and it seems to be working perfectly. Like I said, I'll, I'll get the thermostat out, uh, the temperature probe, and I'll show you the temperatures on, on all the tubs. So I've just got the temperature probe. Um, uh, yeah, I'm not gonna try and fake it. I'm gonna try and show it for what it is. So if I do a test on here, so you can see the surface of the metal is 86.7. So you can see this is where the thermostat is. So if I measure, so you can see it's bang on the plastic. If I do a temperature reading there, 89.5, which is basically perfect. Um, and it has clicked, it's literally just clicked on. You can see the thermostat down here is just clicked on. Um, so yeah, that's how I know it's pretty much perfect. So let me try and find a snake that I can pull out without getting bitten. Uh, let's have a look at, I think this girl will probably be all right. So this is my, bamboo special calico female I've got. She's almost up to size, which is good. Um, I'm actually giving her an extra year. I was gonna breed her to a um, pastel GHI clown, um, but I've, I don't like GHI bamboo, um, and I don't like GHI special either. So I'm going down a different route. I'm currently trying to make some blackhead clowns this year. So the plan for her is I'm probably gonna pair her to a blackhead clown. If I can hit one, I've got two chances. I'm doing a pastel blackhead heck clown to a, a pastel heck clown, one that I've produced myself. Um, and also pairing that uh, blackhead heck clown to the original mum, which is a straight clown. So I've got two chances, hopefully, if they go. Um, if I do get one, then I'll raise that baby up. If I get a male, I'll raise that up, and that will eventually go to this. And because the bamboo and especially special lelic, hopefully I can get some special blackhead heck clowns and some bamboo blackhead heck clowns as well for future, so that'd be absolutely epic. Um, but yeah, I'll show you the temperature here. I don't think she will bite me. She's normally quite good. I'll just do a random temperature in the air. So the heat mat runs about here. So if I do a quick temperature gauge there, 88.9. I think that's because the, uh, the thermostat's only just clicked on. So that's probably why it's a little bit low. Yeah, so 88.9, it's not bad. Hopefully once the temperature does kick in, it will come up a little bit higher. Um, if I go for a cool end, cool end's around 85. That's good, it's so hot in the UK at the minute. Try and keep the room cool is a nightmare. I've had to turn my little pink fan off because it's just too noisy for the audio, but yeah, I'm absolutely melting in here. But yeah, as you can see, temperatures in here are pretty decent. Um, 
as that's now clipped on hopefully that should get the temperature back up this is a really really old thermostat i've probably had this thermostat for oh god i want to say about nine years um and yeah it's it's probably past it it's probably adding add it's enough but i do want to get some new ones i'm trying to work out which thermostats to actually get for this um, i want the digital readout ones um, and I also want to get something that's Bluetooth controlled so that if the temperature in here does drop for whatever reason or it spikes that I get an alert on my phone. So that's something I am looking at trying to get. Um, but yeah, overall, this is this is the rack. Um, I can show you how I made this with the actual uh, brazing side of it. Um, when it comes to building the hatch and rack down here and the grout rack that's going to go on the top of here um, if you want that to be like a not a tutorial but show you actually how i'm doing it at the time then let me know i do need to get quite a lot of feedback from this video because trying to actually build something and film it at the same time is an absolute nightmare it just takes a lot more time so if it's something you're interested in then please let me know and i will try and do that um, but yeah don't take that as a how-to video if you're going to do this make sure you watch someone that actually knows what they're doing not just me who just kind of makes it up as he goes along sort of jack of all trades master of none but yeah these are my racks hopefully you've enjoyed watching them um i do still need to make the fourth one here and it's just yeah it's because it takes so long and i need to basically book a solid week off work to do it um that will be coming eventually um but yeah i probably won't film the making of this rack i might do like a time short time lapse of that the most important bits but um yeah if you want to see this one being built and this one being built then please do let me know but yeah I think they look absolutely awesome. So now I'm gonna break down the cost. Now the cost of this, it probably is a little bit more than what you can get it for. A lot of this stuff I was buying, the first rack I obviously bought for one rack just to test it out. And then the next two I built in, uh, I bought in bulk. So obviously the price is gonna be a little bit less, but I'm basing this off of the materials that I bought for the first rack. So the furthest one on the left, the first one I ever built, I'm basing this off of the price of that one, just because that's what I actually wrote down at the time. Um, the other two, I can't remember the receipts and things like that, but they're probably a little bit cheaper than the first one. So to make one of these racks, uh, I needed to get eight lengths of aluminium tube. Um, the 25.4 millimeters square, the 1.6 millimeters thick, and I was getting them in five meter lengths, 5,000 mil length. So for eight lengths of aluminium tube, it cost me 153 pounds 22. That's not including delivery. Um, I'm not going to put delivery prices and things on. That was literally just the price of the materials. Uh, next was the U channel. So what the actual uh, tub's running, the little U channel bit. Um, I needed 10 lengths of them because they're two meters long. I can get two pieces out of one length. So I needed 10 pieces of them and they come to 160 pounds 50. The next thing that I needed was the polycarbonate sheets. They're the bits that actually go on top of the tubs to stop the snakes from escaping. Um, again, I can buy these in a large sheet and I can get two pieces out of each sheet. So I only needed five uh, sheets and that comes to a total of 61.45. Now the expensive part was the actual tubs. Now I actually bought the tubs as a whole. Um, I actually planned for these racks to be 11 high, but when it actually came to building them, it would have been such a tight squeeze to the top of the ceiling. Um, I decided to go for 10, but I actually ended up buying 44 of these tubs in total. Um, and I got them for £25 each, which I think was an absolute steal. I think these tubs are probably nearly double that now. Um, so for one rack, 10 tubs, £25 each, there was £250 for the tubs. Next is the trunking for the, uh, the heating, so the little uh, conduit that the heat cable runs in. Um, I only needed 10 lengths of this because I could the length that I bought them, they'd run the entire length. And I got them quite cheap. They're only a five reach. So 10 of them, that was £50 for the trunking. And then the heat cable I'm using, because I'm using a 48 meter length cable, it's quite a long one. Obviously the price is going to be more the, the longer it is. Um, but I wanted to get as many tubs. So I can use uh, basically five rows are on one cable, which is absolutely brilliant. Um, so this one piece, one uh, heat cable, it cost me 57.99. So in total, to build one rack, it was £733.16 if my maths is right. Um, like I said, that's what building one rack was when I bought all the uh, materials just for that one rack. When you buy them in bulk, you do get a discount on the materials. So I do have the material, I bought material for the next three racks that I wanted to build. So obviously I've got quite a big discount on that. So if you are gonna do it, uh, you can just do what I did, buy one, make it, see if you can do it, and then buy the rest in bulk. Um, it's entirely up to you, but yeah. So 
that's not including the other costs. I still needed to buy the electrical tape. I think it was like six quid for a massive roll of electrical tape just for the installation of the uh, heat cables. Um, and then obviously the rivets. The rivets I've got in like a, a big box. I think it was like 20 quid for a big box of like a thousand rivets. Um, and the other thing you need to buy is the aluminium brazing rods. I've got a, a big pack of rods and I think it cost me like 35 quid. Um, I don't know how many rods it took to build these so far. I've still got half a pack left. so. I don't put that in the cost. I'm not going to put the rivets in the cost either just because trying to work out how many rivets are, I can't bother to go through that. But roughly, yeah. So we're looking at about £733 for one rack. I know the other two were definitely a lot cheaper. Um, but yeah, that is basically the full cost breakdown. That's without time. Obviously that first rack cut took me a solid week to make. And then as I sort of progressed with the skills, it was a little bit easier for the other two. That's again, bear in mind, I haven't talked about sandpaper cleaning everything down with sandpaper. The tools I already had, I didn't have to go out and buy any uh, extra tools just because I had everything to hand. So just be aware those are extra costs, but just materials alone, that is the total cost for one of these racks. So there you go, there's my racks. Um, I'm absolutely melting. It is actually sweating like mad in here. I need to get this fan back on. Um, but yeah, it, that's the basically load down the racks. Um, if there's anything I've missed that you want to see, let me know. Um, I can do a follow-up video just if I've missed something. Um, but yeah, like I say, it's, it's nothing difficult. Um, the main part of this is just trying to be as accurate as you can. Like I said, I made this with all hand tools. I'd hardly any power tools to do it all. It does take a lot longer doing it with just hand tools, but um, yeah, that's all I had at the, at the time. So if you do want to try this, feel free to send me some messages. Um, I can always give you some more advice over Instagram or through the comments, things like that. But, um, I do advise watching a lot of videos. I literally watch hundreds of videos just on, not snake rack building in general, just, just the brazing side of it. I kind of knew how the snake racks were built and how they went together. I've seen a couple online um, and I've actually been to people's houses and seen the racks and things like that. So I knew what I wanted to make from the beginning. I had a game plan. Um, it was just how I was going to put it all together. So just bear that in mind. But yeah. Hopefully you've enjoyed watching it. Hopefully I've covered everything. Um, next video is probably going to be some clutch updates. Um, I've got some Blackhead stuff to update you on. I've got some Het Ultramel or possibly Het Ultramel. I'm not sure if it is Het Ultramel or not. So I'll update you on them. And I've just cut a clutch of, uh, what was it? So it was my Pastel GHI Clown that I bred to my VPX Anti Girl. Um, I've smashed the odds. I've done really, really well. I think I've got three, I've got two Pastels. I think I've got three Pastel GHIs. And I think I've got five GHIs. So out of 11 eggs, one of them went bad halfway through. Um, I think I've absolutely smashed the odds. And there's going to be some amazing holdbacks in there. A couple of males, a couple of females. Um, but just think, pastel GHI exantic clowns, I think they're going to be amazing. Um, exantic clowns look amazing. GHI exantics look amazing. Getting fire in the mix just to brighten up the whites and darken the blacks, I think it's going to absolutely look amazing. So that's, I've got some females growing up that are double head exanic clown, they're just straight normals, double head exanic clowns. So once I get a male from there, hopefully I can get a pastel GHI male, um, he will be going to both of them females as soon as they're ready next year, um, providing he's ready as well. So yeah, there could be potential for some amazing animals in that clutch. But um, yeah, those eggs, are, they're cut. They're probably gonna be out in the next three to four days. So I'll, I'll probably do one big update on them three clutches. And I've also got another clutch that I can cut on the 3rd of August. Um, so I might try and tie it in with that video if I can. Today's the 25th, so maybe. But yeah, thank you for watching. I really do appreciate it. I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, and yeah, I, another video I need to put out is on the pond. Um, once I've got the filtration sorted out there, which I'm gonna try and get done either today or tomorrow, um, I can start moving all the fish over from my grow out tank into there. Um, and once that's up and running, hopefully stingrays are coming. Hopefully I can get some stingrays in there, which is what I really, really wanted. But I'll do a big update on that and I'll tell you why I'm not doing the fish tank up the top. So if you're interested in the fish side and the pond keeping and all that, um, yeah, make sure you subscribe because that video will be coming up very shortly. So yeah, I think that's everything. Yeah, it's got to be. So thank you for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next one.